Crystal. Crystal Hi, Sterling. Crystal. Nice, to oh, nice to see you. Yeah, come on in, Sterling. Thank you. I found you. Your directions were great. Yeah, without the directions, good luck. Yeah, it's a little tricky. Good luck finding it. Well, Crystal's just going to go downstairs and watch some TV. Yeah. And uh, you and I can... We can. Visit. <laughs> That's why we're here. Yeah, unless you had any... I mean, yeah, I, I think... Be better if you're not here, I guess. Okay, yeah. Which actually, whichever you prefer, if you'd rather. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'll just be around. Okay. Yeah, just go, just go watch TV downstairs, babe. But yeah, I got that for you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, not the funnest circumstances to meet under. No, but you know what? I so admire your courage in doing this. I can't, I can't tell you um, how brave I think you are to follow through on this. I think yeah, I haven't way. wanted to. I understand that. I keep oh, all, sure. all weekend, I keep feeling like, uh, yeah, let's just bag it. You know what I mean? I decided, I kept, every day of the weekend, and all weekend, I just felt sick. Like, you know, like, why am I doing this to myself? You know, <laughs> is it really necessary to do this to myself? But it, uh, it just keeps resurfacing for me. Sure. And, um... I don't like to be one of those people that dwells on things. I don't, I don't like to be one of those people that, uh, I don't, wouldn't want my past to define me, but at the same time, um, my whole life, you know, I've wondered, there's a lot of things I've wondered. Sure. And, um, yeah, so anyway, I, I have some notes here. Um, Good, sure. Yeah, because I, I, what I did was this morning I woke up and I thought, gosh, you know, I'm probably going to get all panicky and nervous and not remember what it is that's, that's weighing on me. <clears throat> your, your kids in Marilee, they might have passed on to you kind of the effect that this has had on me over the years. Yeah, I talked to her. You know, I know she, she uh, saw you and spent some time <clears throat> with you and... Marilee's had some some exchange, and so yeah, I've heard I've heard especially from yeah, yeah, because it kind of in one sense it kind of you know it kind of made my childhood you know from that point forward just changed changed everything for me. You know what I mean? I'm so like sorry. it's not so blissful anymore. Um, but I just wrote down some. And they, they probably pass some of this on to you as far as, you know, from that point forward, I started sleeping with a knife at my side. Oh, gosh. Yeah. A hunting knife. Um, lots of nightmares. Um, always I was always afraid of the dark. I, I've always been afraid of men, um, especially men. Um, I've always been really suspicious of men in the church for some reason. Mm. I don't know if that would make sense, but mm. with you, you know, with what I knew about you being a professor and, and being a filmmaker, you know, and having like that kind of notoriety in the church, it always just made me real suspicious of, um, and not just you, I've heard lots of stories of other people, you know. So have I. Yeah, yeah so. Yeah, I understand that. Um, it's just very suspicious for my own kids. Uh, anxiety when it comes to my own kids like for my kids to be away from me i will have like a full-blown uh, anxiety like, attack yeah like my daughter went on uh my daughter went on um the young women's uh overnighter and like i had to talk to every single leader and i had to know who's going to be there and and i even had to tell the bishopric i don't want them spending the night up there and um, and then I can't sleep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because when they're away from me, you can imagine. And then the emotions range from anger, resentment, um, lots sure. of anxiety. Of course. <clears throat> so that's kind of like, and, and it's just been an ongoing thing for me. And I think it's amplified with, with my own children. Um, I think in my 20s, you know, or my early 20s before I had kids, I don't, I don't think that I was... But, but since I've had my own kids, it just keeps resurfacing and my kids keep asking, why are you the only dad that's so paranoid and so suspicious of other people? And, 
you can imagine. I can't imagine. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I did that damage to you. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. I've always wanted to ask you, um, what was going through your mind that night? What was going on with you? Well, it was a, obviously it was a really dark time for me. Um, I was struggling in my business. At the time, I had a, a film production company um, with a partner in Texas, and we just uh, had a project go south on us and didn't know where the next paycheck was coming from. And Marilee and I were having a hard time. In fact, that night before I came downstairs, uh, I'd said to her, um, you know, I want a divorce. Oh. And um, this may sound odd to you, but I expected her to say, no, we're not going to go there. But instead she said, okay. Oh. And um, that, just, that just pushed me into a, into a dark place. Um, and I, I remember getting out of bed that night and I remember saying just a very quick prayer, oh God, please, not this. And then I came downstairs. And so that's, that's what was going on. There were problems in the business. You know, Marilee had said, yes, okay, let's get a divorce. And I've always struggled with depression. I've had a problem with depression since I was in elementary school. I didn't know what it was then. Right. And so, you know, I've tried a lot of different, different ways to stop the pain of the depression. And, and that night I was acting out sexually and that's what was going on with me because the pain was just so great. I was just trying to find a way to make a connection, a way to stop the pain. And, and you, were the, you were the victim. Okay. I'm so sorry for that. Yeah. Okay. So that's what was going on with me. Does that help? Does that make yeah. some yeah. kind of sense um, to you? Can I ask you a question? So that night, I, um, when, when you were doing that, I, I was, I was almost certain that you were doing the same to your own kid on the other couch. Yeah, I wasn't. Okay. No, I wasn't. Okay, yeah. In fact, I, I, again, I don't know if this helps, but that's the, this is the only time in my life I have ever done this. It's okay. the only time, and I know you said to me, and Marilee too, that you were, you were concerned that maybe there was a pattern of this abuse that had gone on with my own kids or grandkids or with other people, and it's, it's the only time that's happened. Okay. And, and um, were you sexually abused as a kid? I was, actually. I was. And uh, do you remember the pain that caused you? Well, um, I'm not sure how to. I'm not sure how to put it. Um, the The sexual abuse came from my mother. Uh, and um, in fact, I've talked. I've talked to a therapist about this at pretty great length in an attempt to get a hold of that. And, and frankly, forgive my mother who's dead now, but frankly, forgive her, because I have some sense now of what she was going through at the time. Um, and so I think that was part of the reason for the depression and the anxiety I felt as a child, and I felt all my adult life. Okay. So yeah, I, I, I have some understanding of what that pain is about. Yeah, I understand. Um. I, in all honesty, I have a hard time believing, and I, I should tell you, um, there's been times in the past where I've gone on Facebook and just venting about different um, things that I've read about, or, you know, social, cultural events and stuff, social events and uh, matters, and I've, I've gone on Facebook and I said that I was molested or, or sexually abused by my uh, best friend's dad at a sleepover, and um, and then and I, I did at one point say that it was a BYU professor and an LDS filmmaker without using your name. Um, but I'm aware of 
I just, I just want, I want to get this over with and I want to get it, I want to just be honest with each other. And so, um, someone did contact me and share some information, um, that, you know, that was concerning. And so <clears throat> with that said, I just, I just want you to know that, you know, that I'd really appreciate you just to be honest with me because I do find it hard to believe when someone um, says that, you know, it only happened the, the one time and only time and, and that's, and, and that I did get caught. Um, I, I'm, I'm not the only one that finds that yeah. um, hard, very hard to believe. And so um, that's what I, I want to make sure that you know, from you. Uh... Yeah, I, I, I know, I understand where you're going with that. And maybe it would help be helpful to understand that I have acted out sexually in other ways. Okay. You know. What's that look like? Like, what do you mean? Well, there was a, a period of time um, when I was visiting prostitutes. Okay. And, um, and I, you know, I've had two or three affairs with other women. Okay. Um, and so with, again, with the depression and the anxiety, yeah, there were, there were periods, there were periods when I was acting out in other ways. Okay. So it's not like this was the only time I ever acted out and then I just totally stopped and I never acted out again. That's not, that's not accurate. Okay. So yeah, that, that, that helps sense. me a lot that you would say that. Um, but that's the only time I, I had ever done anything like I did to you. To a child. To a child. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's the only time. What do you think about when, um, and I'm probably skipping ahead. Well, I'll just skip ahead in my question. What do you think about when people say that that, that a child attraction is... is uh, like, and I've read so much on the subject, what do you say when someone says that's, you know, a very unique, uh, pedophilia is a very unique attraction and um, that it's not curable and that it's like really addictive? Like, what, would, what do you say to that? Because that's always been my struggle is, how could I be the only one knowing what I've read about you know, pedophilia, knowing that how powerful of a thing that is, and and so what would what would you say? Well, you've you've obviously done more research on this than I have, um, because after this happened with you, I mean, um, you know, I I was just horrified at what I'd done. Uh -huh. I was just horrified because I'd never done anything like that before. Um, and so I, I guess, uh, uh, you know, and, and I, again, I, I, being as honest as I can, um, I, I've never considered myself a pedophile. I mean, that, that one instance was so horrifying to me. And I've carried the awareness of that, like, but not to the degree that you have, for sure, but I've carried the awareness of that. And so I've always had some anxiety about it, anxiety of, and question in my own mind, mm -hmm. is that something that's deeply rooted in me? Um, yeah. And so I've always been, um, I've always been cautious about it. I mean, I mean, I've probably been cautious with my own kids and cautious with my grandkids mm -hmm. because I just don't want anything like that to happen again. Um, but would I consider myself a pedophile? I mean, I've never thought of myself in that way. I've certainly thought of myself as being sexually addicted, for sure. Have you ever thought, wasn't, have you, haven't you ever thought, like the, the affairs that you had, was any of them with men? Uh-huh, a couple okay. were. Okay. A couple were. So then that makes a little more sense yeah, to Yeah, a couple were. Okay. Yeah. But, but again, they No, were. what I'm saying is, I'm trying to understand your honesty it's helping me a lot because I'm trying to understand why me, a boy, and and now what you're saying makes a little bit more sense. And um, 
and by the way, what, what you said about um, the affairs, mm -hmm. that, that was what that was related to. Okay. Um, and so it just, it just makes me feel good to know that, that you're being honest with me. I if, that. You know, if, if, I had to put, if I had to put a label on it, um, I guess the label I would put on it is bisexual. Yeah. Um, rather than pedophile. Um, okay, yeah. So, and, and I was 10, I think, but, and I, I don't, I mean, I don't proclaim to be, you're just basically saying it was a deep, dark moment for you, and, well, and, and I need to get to this other question, because the other question is something that's really been on my heart for as long as I can remember. Let me just, I don't want to skip ahead here too much. But sure. Um... <clears throat> Okay, so what counseling um, have you received? Like, how, how much counseling, and, and is, is it an ongoing thing? Like, sexual counseling? Or is it more like counseling just for depression? Like, what's, what's your status around all that? I, I've worked with, um, over the years, over the last, what, 25 years. Yeah. Yeah, I've worked with a number of counselors. Okay. Um, and uh, I've worked with two specifically about the sexual addiction, uh -huh. one when we were living in Florida and one back here. Um, yeah. And the others have largely been about the, the roots of the depression okay. and the anxiety. But yes, I, I've worked specifically with two counselors. Did any of them think it was, did any of them classify a 10 year old boy as different than just like a, a male attraction? Did any of them classify that as more like a pedophilia attraction? Uh, not that I remember. Okay. You no, know, not that I remember. I remember the counselor in Florida asked me a couple of the same questions that you're asking, like, do you still feel an attraction to boys or, you know, to younger kids or okay. whatever? And, um, and, and no, I, no. Okay. No. Um, what, uh, so, the, the counseling, is that something you have to keep doing throughout your whole life, or is that something you kind of graduate from? I'm just curious. Well, this is, this is just opinion, but, you know, I still struggle with the depression. Yeah. Um, I'm still wrestling with that. In yeah. fact, I just went through a drug treatment here in July that was not very helpful. And so the, the conclusion I've sort of come to is that it's going to be with me the rest of my life. And I, it's going to be about managing the depression and managing the pain. So when I, when I say that the sexual stuff, are you, is the sexual stuff associated with the depression? Is that? It was, yeah, it was. But I've been in the last, oh, I don't know, maybe five or six years, I've been able to sever that connection. Oh. So it, it no longer, okay. when I get depressed, I no longer look for ways to act out, act out either through pornography or, you know, or attraction to women or to mother men. So that connection, I think, has been broken. Do I still worry about that? Yes, I still worry about that. Okay. You know, Marilee and I talk about that a lot, and she's been amazing through all of this. I mean, she's really... Does she know about... The affairs? She does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She knows about that. And okay. we've, we've, through with counseling again, we've wrestled through that and struggled through okay. that. We love each other deeply. And, and, you know, it's frankly, it's a miracle that she stayed with me through all this. Yeah. She's an angel. I know she that really about, is. I know that about her. Um, let's see. Did you, okay. Do you remember, did you and Mary Lee have, allow other kids to sleep at your house after I, after that happened to me, did you guys kind of draw a hard line and say no friends are allowed to sleep over? You know, I, I don't remember specifically. I, I, I don't remember any sleepovers after that. Uh -huh. I think Marilee may have drawn the line and said we're just not going to go there. Okay. We're just not going to risk it. <laughs> um, my understanding is that the sexual abuse was reported to your state president by... Um, my dad had called and told him what had happened, and then, uh, and then, um, basically, 
said he had a relationship with the state state president, um, and that he would uh, that he would report it to the state president. So when you got called into the state president, um, did you, you just you just basically told him what what you'd done to me? Um, Obviously, you told him what had, had you'd done to me, and then what was the the punishment? Uh, Merrily had said you, what was it? Two two years of disfellowship. I was disfellowship for two years. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Do you think that that was lenient on you, or do you? Well, I have no way to. I have no way to judge. Okay. That. I just don't know how to judge that. I mean, I told the state president that I was, you know, I was prepared to go through whatever he thought was necessary and, and I just sort of let the process okay. take its own. Do you, th do you, um, why do you think that my parents were never, um, cause you went through like one of those church courts. Mm -hmm. Why do you think my parents were never contacted, um, to hear their side of the story? You know, I don't know. That's a, that's a good question. I, I don't know if, uh, you know, I, I just don't know what the process of the church okay. court was. I don't because they never talked to my parents, and they and they never talked to me. Um, uh, let me see. Well, that surprises me a little bit. I didn't know that. Yeah, no, I just and that surprises me a little. I, I don't know if you may know, but that I also, after talking to the state president, you know, he said, "Look, this this has got to be reported to the police." And I said, "Well, all right, I'll go down and report it to the police." And so I went, I called and got a detective and went down to the Salt Lake City Police Department and reported it to a detective and he took notes. Really? Yeah. See, and, and then what happened, what did he, where did he go with that from there? What's weird about that is my mom and dad, because I, you know, I've always, back then I was 10, I didn't really have a voice, I didn't really sure, have, sure. I wasn't really involved in any of it, but you always wonder like what came of that. And my parents said that, they said that the police never contacted them, never talked to any police, and they said the church never contacted them, and they says, and then they said, if Sterling had, had done what you just said you'd done, that, that they would have just arrested you on the spot for child sex abuse, like, because they don't need, like, approval to... Right to uh, charge that. If someone goes to the police and says, I did such and such to a child, according to my parents, they just arrest you on the spot, bang. And even if my parents said, no, 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 don't press charges, it doesn't matter, because once they know that, that by law they have to. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know if the laws were the same 25 years ago as they are now. Okay. I understand that now. Okay. What came back to me, and I don't remember how it came back to me, but was that your parents had said we're not going to press charges. So I assumed, maybe wrongly, but I assumed from that, okay. that they had been contacted by the police detective and had said, you know, we're not going to pursue this. But again, I don't know that for sure. Okay. I just don't know that. I talked because I wanted to know you know, why was I, see, I was curious all these years, you know, it's interesting. I assumed that the church had given you lots of counseling and lots of support. And then I was wondering all these years why they didn't give you lots of counseling and support. No? Well, no, I, I, I certainly didn't. No, I didn't get any counseling from the church. I mean, oh. it was, it was all about the disciplinary counseling. Oh, crap. Um, so no, I didn't get any counseling from the church. Oh. Uh, and, and, you know, we figured out that I was going to have to go to an outside counselor to work through this. Which you did on your own. Which we did, uh, yeah, okay. which I did on my own. So no, I didn't get any counseling or... Yeah, because I was, I've been wondering all these years, like, because, you know, you, you grow up with these, these issues, and then I'm wondering, and my parents are like, they're like, gosh, you know, we've never been anything through anything like that. We didn't know what to do. And, sure. and they're like, you know, and now it's become so prevalent and out in the open that, you know, you, you yeah. need counseling. And I'm always, I've always thought like, if the church knew that they, that you'd done that to me and you, you did tell them that you'd done that to me, then why would the church not have reached out to me and then come to find out from that the state president 
His name was Harold Brown, and he said that he was the, a psychologist and head of the entire church's social service program. So I'm sitting there thinking to myself, like, why did they it's not? Kind of, it's kind of a no-brainer. Isn't why it? didn't they offer support for me? Like, why was there absolutely no concern for my welfare um, when you told them what you'd done? Why was there no zero concern for a 10-year-old boy, you know? Well, I'd like to know the answer to that question as well. Um, I mean, he was, I know. But you were forthright when you talked to in that court. You told him. Oh, totally. Yeah, okay. Yeah, totally. Okay. Because that's what made me wonder, was he forthright? Because nobody ever reached out to me or my parents. I don't, I don't lie very well. Okay. You know, I don't. And, and I remember that church court vividly, and uh, I, I was totally candid about it. Okay. And said, look, I'm willing to take whatever punishment you want me to have on this, uh, I, because I, you know. I sense that about you. You've been very accommodating for me. Um, I appreciate it. It's. I, I would so like to see you get beyond this or get the, as far past it as you can. Um, you already answered that question I had about the police. You already answered that. Um, how come, why, why were you, I, this one's bothered me too because I've wondered all these years, you know, do the, do the kids know now? You know, the kids are grown up. His, his kids are all grown, grown up. I'm sorry about that, by the way. Thanks. Um, because that's, that's horrible, but, um, I've always wondered why are the, have the kids not been told, uh, about this so that, you know, that they could have preventative measures around the grandchildren and, and sleepovers and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's, it's well, uh, to, to be honest with you, um, uh, it never occurred to me or to Marilee that we should bring the kids into this and, and talk with them about this. Oh. Because, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling any, any attraction or pull to the grandkids or to my own kids. And so in terms of, you know, I, I said I worried about this, yeah. you know, because I carried this with me. Um, but it just frankly never occurred to us. That, that it was important to bring the kids in on this. It, it just never occurred to us. I wonder if it occurred. And, and obviously, I'd like to leave this as far behind. As I possible. wonder if it occurred to Mary Lee, but it was just too hard. Too hard to go there. Yeah, you'd have to ask her. I mean, that's possible. I, I mean, yeah. But I, I can, it is a hard thing. It is a hard thing. Have, yeah. have you had the grandkids over to sleep over? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. They've been, and they've been fine, yeah. Um, it's one of the questions I've always wondered. I'm just going to ask you: have, How how would you have felt if uh, if the same had happened to your your ten year old son at a sleepover? Well, we we actually had an instance in family. I don't know if she talked to you about this, mm -hmm. where um, one of her actually one of her children molested. Okay. And so you know we with. We worked through that with, with, uh, but I, you know, I would have felt, I would, I would have felt awful about it. Yeah. Of course, I would have felt terrible. But the first concern I have to tell you from my point of view would have been on that child. The that, child. That would have been the first concern. Yeah. And, and also concerned that it could be happening to other people. Sure. Okay. Yeah. We've wondered that about, we've wondered if. You know, if there are other instances, he's in now. Okay. And we've wondered the same thing that you've wondered. You yeah, know, you've wondered like I've wondered. Yeah, we have. Yeah, we've wondered if, if that's still a problem with him. And so, yeah, of, cor of course, in a situation like that, yeah, you, you, you wonder about the perpetrator and you really worry about the victim. Yeah. For sure. Um, this is a hard one. Um, I've got a son that's... Um, my age now, when my age when this happened to me, my son's about the same age that I was when that when that happened to me. Um, so it just causes a lot of emotion um, when I think about him, and I, when I look at him, he looks like me. <laughs> so when I look at him, it's like looking at a ten year picture, ten year old picture of myself. 
Um, That's got to be um, a confusing experience too, given what you're carrying. Yeah, this is a hard one. Um, had I had I not gotten up and gone to and, and rushed to the bathroom and locked myself in the bathroom, um, what was your intention for me? Do you do you remember where your mind was going? I actually, yeah, I do. I actually I actually don't remember you getting up and going to, into the bathroom. I don't remember that because I I remember specifically being so I I sort of came to myself. I came to my senses. And I remember being so horrified at what I was doing that I just left and went back upstairs. I mean, I didn't actually know that you'd gone into the bathroom and told me in Merrily that you'd spent the night there. Um, just, you know, that's just horrendous to me. Let me tell you what I remember. I remember you coming over and doing that to me, and then, and then I, I woke up and saw you doing that to me, and then I, I could see what you were doing and I was frozen, and, and you were reaching up over the top of me. And so then um, I started to stir, almost like, you know, okay, you know, I'm going to pretend like I'm waking up. So I started to stir, and then you stopped. And then, uh, and then I just laid there frozen, and then you came back again. And if I remember correctly, it was the third time... Uh, that you came over and started doing that, and then I um, jumped up and looked at you, and you froze, and you were standing in the back of the room, and you had a, a remote controller in one of your hands, and you were looking at a, a TV with like a black and white movie, uh -huh. and there was no sound on at all, so you almost like just stood there, froze, and kind of pretended like you was watching a movie with no sound on, uh -huh. and then I ran to the bathroom. When I was in the bathroom, uh, you came to the door probably three or four different times. Oh my gosh, I don't remember that. Yeah, and were trying to coax me out of the bathroom, and, and you were saying, you know, are you okay? Come on out. And I wouldn't come out, and I just kept saying that I, I felt really sick, and that I, and then after, after probably three or four different times you tried to coax me out and then I think when she realized I wasn't coming out is when you finally yeah, ma maybe went back upstairs, upstairs or whatever it was. So that's the way that I recall, that's what I recall to well, I'm, I'm sure your memory is more accurate on yeah. that than mine is. Okay, so. Yeah, I'm sure that, I'm sure. So I've right. always thought my whole life if I don't jump up and go to the bathroom, where's that? Like, where are we going with that? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. where's that headed? Because the reason I wonder that, Sterling, is because I feel like, I feel like that was a smart thing for me to do, was to, oh. to run and lock myself in that bathroom. And I think, you know, what if I was a lesser person? What if I was a more timid person? You know, where was that going? You follow where I'm, my logic? Yeah, I follow your logic, and, and I've never followed that through in my own head. Yeah. I mean, I just have I don't want to, yeah. Yeah, I just have not I'm sorry. To. I am sorry. I'm, it, it, I'm sorry to oh, make you, have, to make you, you go nothing, there. You have nothing to be sorry for, Sean. You have nothing to apologize for. I feel bad because I don't, I don't want to make you feel like I don't want to make you say, this is what I was going to do to you. But as a victim, I don't know if it's normal, but I've always wondered, like, where were we, where were we ultimately yeah. going? Like, where, sure. where, was, where was this headed? How, how bad would this have if you progressed to yeah. if I hadn't gotten out of there? Yeah, so, um, okay. And then um, you've already answered a lot of these questions that I, that I have. Um, so when you say that sometimes the depression leads to sexual things, and, and that was the only time it ever led towards sexual attraction to children? Mm -hmm. um, have you ever viewed child pornography? No, I viewed, I viewed male pornography and female pornography, but not child pornography. Okay. No, it just hasn't been a, hasn't been a thing for me. Okay. Um, Again, um, uh, I wrote here, how can I know you are telling the truth? You got caught 
you were required to report to the church authorities. You didn't just voluntarily report yourself. My parents asked to report it directly to the state president who, who he had a relationship with. You were called in by the state president, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there's a big difference to me between turning oneself in and, and confession, so to speak, and being caught. Mm -hmm. um, and so the basis of that question again is... Well, I actually think, I actually think, uh, my memory's fuzzy on this, but I think I'd had a conversation with you. I think he called me at some point. I could be fuzzy about this. Uh -huh and just told me that he was going to tell the state president that your dad had talked to him and he was going to talk to the state president. Uh -huh. uh, and so I thought, okay, there it is. And this happened, this happened very quickly. I mean, this is within a day or, or two of, uh, you know, of what I did. Uh -huh. So it happened, it happened very quickly. I mean, I didn't, I didn't have a long time to ruminate about this or think about it. Uh -huh. It happened pretty fast. I see. Uh, you already answered that one. Um, you already answered that one. Um, did you report your affairs to the church authorities? I did. Uh, you mean you mean subsequently? You mean later after that? Like affairs that you've had? Have oh. you always you've always gone and reported those to? Oh, oh no, no, I haven't always. Oh, I see. I haven't always. Um, I've been. I've been past the acting out, as I said, for, for a while now. And um, I had a long conversation with the bishop. Oh, this has been, I don't know, six or seven years ago, you know, and, uh -huh. and I told him I was in counseling and Marilee was there and we were getting past it. Uh -huh. So the, no church action was taken. So that you didn't have to go through a court or anything? I didn't have to go through, through a court again, yeah. For the affairs? Yeah. Um, how do they do that? Do they... Because I would think that if you report an affair, they would, again, church court, uh, discipline... Again, I, I'm not entirely sure how all that works, but I know... Um, Okay. I, I, I'm just not sure how, how decisions get made or why they get made the way they do. Okay. I mean, I know there is, a, uh, I do know this for sure, that, that there is a, a push to see church courts not as courts of punishment, but rather as, um, as discipline, they call them disciplinary councils, no, not church courts. Okay. And, and the idea is not just to punish a, a perpetrator unless it's illegal and it's totally illegal, they have to report it oh. to the police. I mean, they do that. But beyond that, uh, it's a more, um, it's more of an attempt to be helpful to bring somebody in line with okay. their covenants. I understand. Okay. Yeah. Um, we really tried to get away with the idea that it's, it's a so court. So is mine the only issue. church court you ever had to? It's the only one. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. And how many affairs do you think you've had? Oh, gosh. I don't know, maybe three or four. Okay. But those, those were a long time ago. I see. Those were a long time ago. You said something was as recent as five, six years ago? The last time I had an affair with anybody was... Um, It was when we were living in Florida, which had been, would have been about 2004. Okay. Yeah, so it's been a long time. Okay, you must have said something else about five, six years ago. Five or six years ago is, is when I felt like with, with the therapy I was in that I was able to make a break. Oh, from the... Between, between the depression and the anxiety and you, yeah. the sexual acting out. Is it... Um... I, I heard from someone that you're currently filming the temple videos, endowment videos? No. Mm -mm. Oh, you're not? I'm not. Mm -mm. Okay. Because um, I thought that that was... But then again, I mean, which is fine unless there had been stuff that, you know, you hadn't reported. Then I wonder why, why would he be doing that if, if there's things that had gone unreported or... Sure. Yeah. It's a fair question. Yeah. Um, did you ever have any uh, sexual interactions with any of the college-age students that, that you've had as a teacher and professor? No. 
Oh, okay. Nope. Um, Never have. So this question kind of was answered for me too. Yeah, it really was. It was when, you know, there was an interview where, where you were asked about Harvey Weinstein and then, oh. and then you said, oh, you know, about his, his first accusers and you said, oh, I guarantee it's only the tip of the iceberg. And uh, that st- kind of stuff is very, uh, sexual abuse is like commonplace in the film industry. In Hollywood particularly. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was asked that question in an interview in South Korea last year. Yeah, and then yeah. When, I, when I read that, you've I was done, you've like... You've your research, for sure. Well, yeah, because I read that, and I was like... Because I just want to know who Sterling Van Wagenen is, you know? And, and then, sure. And then I read that, and I was like... It just... Because, again, as a victim, you can't help but wonder if there's other people out there that are hiding, and they're quiet, sure, and they're too scared, or they be, think people won't believe them. Um, so I've always wondered that same thing. Well, there's certain, certainly a lot of instances in the last year or two where that's been the case. That's what I mean. Where like, people have come forward and have been silent for year, for decades in some cases. Sterling, when something like this has happened to you, and, and I don't know if you can relate to this on another level, but when something like this has happened to you, you form a very strong emotional connection with it. So for whatever reason, uh, I got a lot of people come to me and tell me they were sexually abused as children. And then I have that that commonality with them. Um, And because it's just a very prevalent problem. Yeah. uh, And then also, like news media. Oh, it's Every time I see it. News, yeah. But I don't think I read it like a normal person. I don't. I, Mm -hmm. I read it and then I think it makes me wonder. It makes me stir and wonder. Like... Well, it, it makes me stir and wonder too, because yeah. again, I still carry, you know, I still carry the memory of that with me. Yeah. And so when I read it, you know, I think, boy, you know what? I did that. You know, I just, you know, and I, I still feel the prick of that. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um. So then I've always wondered if I was just the, you know, the tip of the iceberg if I was just the tip of the iceberg, um, right? No, you're not. Yeah, those are, I got through that pretty fast. Yeah, those are all the questions that have been on my mind and, uh, and uh, you know, really on my mind all these years. That's it. What, I, what else can I do to help you, help you through this? I don't know. Uh, told me that you and Crystal decided to leave the church a while back. Yeah, four or five months ago. I wonder how much this had to do with that decision. Um, and I don't know that I could answer that because um, I, I don't know what part that might have played, but ultimately, I mean, I wouldn't put that on you. If that's if that's what you're kind of wondering, I, I wouldn't put I wouldn't put that on you in terms of, you know, like have I I have been very suspicious of priesthood leaders um, my whole life ever since that happened to me only because uh, I was told that you were this you know BYU professor LDS filmmaker gospel doctrine teacher and and so for me. The fa- you know, it just kind of, it killed my trust in the priesthood. Sure, understandably. So. Yeah, understandably. Um, is that the, the main reason that we, I mean, we, we decided to leave the church because we no longer believe in it. Um, for a while there, for probably the last five, six years, I haven't felt right in it. Mm. Um, I read the CES letter, which you're probably familiar familiar with. I read that in 2013 when it came out. Mm. Just kind of, uh, at the time, I felt like my conversion was so strong. I just read it, and then I kind of thought, eh, I'll just kind of shelf all of that. It's okay. Um, I still have a testimony. But then for the, you know, for five, six years there, I felt mentally checked out and a lot of the social 
and um, administrative issues that I've seen church mishandle, social, um, cultural issues that I see in the church. And, and I would say that none of that really has anything to do with you other than, yeah. other than I am, I have been very suspicious. I, I, you know, when people talk about a bishop, I can't help but say that bishop's a man. Just yeah, a man. He is. Yeah, Just a he man. Is. And when people talk about those, those Quorum of the Twelve and those general authorities, I can't help but say they're just men and they have all the same weaknesses as any other man and we put them up on these immortal platforms. So I've, all, I've always felt like that and I think that that is in large part because of what happened to me as a kid. Yeah. But um, with that all said, uh, Crystal came to me and she just said, Sean, um, I feel like I haven't, and she was very, very loyal, very staunch LDS. Mm. Always studying them scriptures, always just on the ball, the kind of person that would go beg for callings and listen to general conference talks every day, all day. And, and she came to me and just said, Sean, I feel like I haven't been progressing within spiritually within the Mormon church for a very long time, which was a shock to me. And then she said, uh, I've, I've been listening to Mormon stories. Uh, John DeLynn. John DeLynn, uh huh. And she said, I started listening to those because um, I, I was kind of intrigued by it because there was a lot of, a lot of these people that were having struggles with the church, they also um, still believed it. So she thought it was like safe territory. Because she's like, you know, I was listening to people. They have issues, that they have concerns, but they're still very faithful. Right. They're not just antagonistic people against the church. And she said, then I started listening to those stories. And, um, and she just comes to me. She says, I don't believe it anymore. And then I said, I just, I didn't even respond. I was just like. Surprised and shocked you. Absolute shock. Like I said, I've been men I was mentally checked out for probably five or six years, but I just kind of came to the, de the determination on my own privately that I'm just going to have to suck it up, and I'm just going to have to keep going. And I'm and and uh, and and so when she said I I don't believe it anymore, and I. I don't want to be Mormon anymore. And Crystal's just kind of that way, like she's cool that way. So if she decides to do something, even if everybody could say that's not a good idea or you're crazy or like she pretty true to her own colors. And, um, and so then I started looking more seriously at, at some of the, um, the concerns. And, and for me, it was just, if you've ever seen your movie, guys, so if you've ever seen the Truman movie, yeah. the Truman Show, is it? Sure, the Truman Show. Yeah, yeah. and, uh, you know, he's running around like he's, like, am I crazy? You know what I mean? He's running around all over town, and he's he's kind of, like, starting to pick up on little things, like, wait a minute, I, I saw something there. What's everybody not telling me? Yeah. And then at the end of the movie, you, you'll see when he, he goes out on that boat, and then... He hits, and they try to hit him with the storm. He hits that wall, and then he's like, you just kind of see that look in his eyes like, son of a gun. <laughs> and that's how I feel. Yeah. Um, that's, and, and my, my whole family's still active. Yeah. And um, I'm the only one. But that's how I feel. It's like, I felt like, wait a minute, like, not that everybody else knows, because I think my parents believe it still, mm -hmm. but just kind of like, wait a minute, like there's a whole lot of stuff people haven't been telling me. A lot of stuff hidden, a lot of stuff twisted, and I was just like, and that's how you feel when you're in my position. I don't know if you've ever talked, you probably talked to a lot of other people that have left the church, or I don't know if you've had kids that have left the church, but has left the church, yeah. Once you uh, get on that side and you look back at it, and then you, of course, you still acknowledge it. Like the majority of Mormon people are good people. They are, yeah. Yes. But then you go, like my dad said to me, Sean, 
there's some geniuses in the church. You know, you got genius professors and doctors and, and surgeons. And he goes, he goes, Sean, you know, surely if, if everything that you're learning and reading, if that was accurate, surely these geniuses, you know, they, they would concur with you. They would, they would root it out. And I sit there and I says, Dad, not a fair statement. I said, how many geniuses are there outside of the Mormon church? <laughs> you know? Because if there's only like three and a half million active true blue Mormons, mm -hmm. how many really smart people are there outside of the church looking at all of the church members just going, are you guys crazy? Like none of it lines up archaeologically, scientifically, and uh, historically. Um, so I just want to tell you, for me, I told you this. For me to tell my family that I'm not going to be Mormon anymore. That was a tough deal, I bet. I'm just telling you, it's like major, because mm -hmm. my dad's most favorite thing to say, and I think I've probably heard him say this on probably a thousand occasions, is, you know, and you know he's a successful guy, he's yeah. a smart guy. Yeah. And he said on thousands of occasions, I mean, look, there's Joseph and Jesus, you know, this. He said, my most proud accomplishment is that all of my kids and my grandkids, that they're all in, in white, they all have temple, temple recommends, they all, um, they're all sealed, they're all active. And so for me to hear that, yeah, to, to know true. that, that's not been told once or twice, that's, that's painful. And he, sure. didn't, he didn't say it to hurt me, or to prevent me from leaving, he really meant it. Sincerely, that's his most proud accomplishment for me to be the demise of that. And I, I would say me, maybe more so than even most of my brothers and sisters, I want to please my mom and dad. Mm. I want to please them. This is like one of the, this is probably the first time in my life I've ever just gone against the grain. Mm. This is significant. Mm. And so um, usually I do what they, they want of me. Yeah. I want to be that good son. So I told them that part of this for me is mom and dad have continually told me that, you know, the church handled it. And that back then it was, that's what was appropriate. They, you know, it was appropriate to turn it to the church. That's kind of what you did. Um, I know, because I've done a lot of reading and, and so forth, and with Sam Young and all these testimonials of, you know, bishops abusing little kids and, and all that stuff. I know that back in that day and age, you were actually encouraged not to go to the police, to go to the bishop. The bishop is the one that handles everything. So culturally, then that was really wrong. Yeah, in my opinion. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I, obviously, I didn't feel like I could, you know, reach out to you. For obviously, ten. And um, I just, I just assumed that somehow, you know, you were going to be taken care of. Yeah. And that obviously that didn't happen. I don't. Put, I don't put that on you, but. But you know the things I've learned about the church, things they have hidden. It's made me question everything, yeah. and it's made me wonder, wait a minute, wait a gosh darn minute here, you know, did they, did they take proper yeah. measures and... Well, let me, let me say this to you too, um, you know, given, given the fact that I've had this over here in my emotional and psychological life, and the church has been over here, you know, I've struggled all my life to try and get those two sides together for me. And, um, you know, as I sit here, you know, in 2018, um, it's a mystery to me, but the gospel has never worked for me. Okay. It's never worked for me in terms of getting those sides together. And the only thing I hold on to um, is the atonement, is, is the belief that somewhere, somehow, uh, this is all going to, going to be healed. It's all going to be righted. I don't 
necessarily believe it's going to happen in this life. I wish it would for your sake and for my sake both. Yeah. But that's, that's the thing I hold on to. That's the only thing I really hold on to uh, is the atonement. And the church, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, but it's, it's, never, it's never really worked for me. Okay. And I sure have tried to make it work for what sure. What do you mean it, it hasn't worked? What does that mean? And I know what, you well, mean. What I I know mean, what you're saying what about I mean, the atonement, I get that. Yeah, what I, what I mean is I've never been healed in the sense that, you know, I've been, never been healed from the depression, from the anxiety. You know, I've struggled with that, like I said, since I was a, in elementary school. Right. You know, it's the thing that's just taken my life off track, created the kind of problems that I've made for you. Yeah. And, you know, Marilyn and I have gone through this so many times. And I prayed and I prayed and I said, you know, how long do I have to endure this? How long is this? does this go on? Mm -hmm. I mean, I prayed to die so many times, it's just, I, I, mean, I can't even tell you. Oh, God. Um, and, you know, I look at other people in the church and, you know, they seem to be doing just fine. Yeah. And I know everybody has problems and everybody has struggles. And it's just a mystery to me that, that somehow those promises that the gospel will work for you, will heal you, um, it's just a mystery to me that it's never worked for me. Uh -huh. It's just never worked. Right. And that's why the only thing I, I really can hold on to is the atonement. That's the only thing that keeps me I think sane. I know what you mean by saying it never really worked. I, even as a kid, <laughs> maybe it's something in, inside you inherent, because something inside me inherently, I, I just always thought like, why do we have to go to a church? And then I would think, I'd say it to my brother, and then he would say, oh, Sean, you know, you, you just, you're just rough, and you want to just go out and play in the outside all the time, and you, you need to give that time to God. You need to give that time to God. That's God's time. And they would kind of hush me that way. But even, like, in my early teens, I'd, I'd just be like, why do we have to, like, report to men? They're just men. You know what I mean? Why like, they have to get between us and God. Yes. Right? And yeah. so it's I funny because when I left the faith, first person I could only think to call a mentor of mine, close friend in my business, couldn't tell my parents at that time. And I called him and um, he was raised Mormon, but he stopped going to the Mormon church when he was like 12 mm. on his own. Really? <laughs> yeah. And, um, and, he, and he, I just know he's a very spiritual person. And I always said that, even as a kid, you know, there's a difference between religion and spirituality. There's got to be a difference because there's too many two-faced people. So then I called him and I told him and then he goes, oh, okay. He said, well, Sean, he goes, you know, when I was 12 years old, I decided that I no longer had to report to a man in order to um, understand that to get to God, and then I said, "You're 12," and he goes, "Yep." Yeah. And he goes, "And not only that," he said, uh, "I also decided that I didn't need to go to a building in order to worship God. I could worship God anywhere I was, anytime I wanted." And and when he said this to me. And because he's a very, I, I respect him. I mean, he's a very spiritual person. He's, he's just a wonderful, he's the most generous person I've ever met in my life. And, uh, and I just, I just, when he said that, I thought, man, it was like my heart just sank. <laughs> I thought, that's the most easy thing to say. You don't have to report to a man. You don't have to report to a building. But that is two things that a, a church does not want anyone saying that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like fundamentally, that just rules out religion altogether. Yeah. You know? But for me, it's like my heart just sang. And then when you leave the church, Sterling, you pretty much everything tumbles. Mm -hmm. Like when you talk about the atonement, mm -hmm. you, when, you, when you don't believe in Joseph, any, Joseph Smith anymore and, and you don't believe in this modern day prophets and apostles, then everything starts to crumble. And so my wife had a full-blown anxiety attack. I've never seen her like this. Mm. She couldn't function for like three or four days. She couldn't breathe. 
um, she was just begging me to take her to the hospital. Mm. And uh, she, because she said, if none of that's true, it, then how do I know that there's a God? And if there's not a God, how can I go on living? Okay. Oh boy, it got really basic. But it was crazy because this same person yeah. that, that, that I called, the same person that told me that, Crystal said, well, do you, do you believe in God? And then he said, oh, yeah. And she said, you do? <laughs> and he says, oh, yeah, absolutely. He says, I study science and research and history. He's really a genius. Mm. And he's probably about, I bet he's 60, 67 now. But, um, and he goes, oh, man. He goes, yes. He goes, I know there's a God. And then Crystal just, you just big smile on her face. <laughs> she said, oh, as if he has, you know, there's permission, Crystal. You can, but really, she just needed to hear that, that sure. from someone that she loves and admires and respects. Sure. Um, when you talk about the atonement, um, well, the, I, the atonement I, is not unique to I the Mormon can, church. Absolutely not. No, not no, unique. absolutely not. And and so, right now, I would say that I'm a mixed bag. I'm 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 uh, been I've been turned upside down and inside out and shook all up and and so. But I always wondered how when people Sterling, just being honest with you, um, I always wondered how when people would get up and cry and say, you know. Christ atonement and they're bawling and then they would say I know <laughs> and and then I would look at them with you know and not that I'm like a cynic but I would kind of sit there and think listen like and how I feel now is I really didn't know Joseph Smith and truth be told nobody in the church knows him they don't know him they don't know him they think they do you, we make movies about him and we think we know him. Yeah. We don't know him. And there's a lot written about him and a lot in journals and there's a lot of things he did that nobody's aware of. Mm. Um, and part of the reason is because the Mormon church has hidden it and sure. they disallow us from seeing that information, but they want us to see him as they want us to see him. I know so much about they, him now. The church has mythologized him. Yes. Yeah. And, sure. and truth be told, Brigham Young is more so responsible for the success of the church, for the proliferation and the, sure. you know, well, what it's yeah. become yeah. far more than Joseph. People that know Joseph's character and how he was and, and you know, how destructive he could, self-destructive he could be, they've often said had he not been martyred, that he would have run the church into the ground. Yeah, um, <laughs> probably true. Yeah, but I sit there when I when I hear I hear people say that about Jesus, and then I always sit there and think, they don't know Jesus. <laughs> I didn't even know Joseph Smith, and and yet that was only what two hundred years ago. For me to say I know Joseph, and I know what they mean, you know, intrinsically what they're referring to, but. But there again, it just, I'm starting to learn to be more of an objective thinker um, because we know about Jesus what they want us to know, what the Roman Catholic Church wanted us to know, the governing bodies wanted us to know. There's so, I'm even just coming to learn that there's so much we don't know. But I understand, like, in That's terms of. That's a good place to be. In I terms think. of the atonement, I understand what the atonement is supposed to mean. I understand. You know, I understand all of that, and I can see how people would, would want to connect so badly um, with that, especially if they felt like they're not whole. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. You know, at one minute, I, I get all yeah. of that, um, but I'm just, I'm just, I'm just talking. I'm just talking <laughs> to you because I don't get to talk a lot about this, um, because Mormon people. I can't talk to my mom and dad like this. Mm. I can't, because because then they they view you as apostate. They view you as someone that is just they, that's going to try to drag them down. You can't just be honest about any doubt, doubts. Like I believe in Jesus. 
I still do. I do, but I just have all these questions now. But it felt like that's a good thing. before I was not allowed to have. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a good thing. You know, I had a I was working on a film a few years ago, um, uh, uh, working with a Baptist minister, mm-hmm. um, and uh, he was killed in an automobile accident. And we talked to several people who were witnesses to this, and you know, he was pronounced dead in the car. And, um, and he wrote a book called 90 Minutes in Heaven because oh. he went to the other side and then they pulled him out and they were able to revive him. But he's got this detailed account of what he saw on the other side, believe it or not. Yeah. But he said something to me that was really meaningful. And Because and, I asked him, I said, okay, look, you were a minister before you were killed in this accident and you believed in God. Yeah. And you were brought back after have, spending this time in what, what Mormons would call a spirit world. What's the difference between your idea of God before and after? Yeah. And he said, I can just tell you in one word, and that is bigger. This is bigger. Yeah. yeah. And I've never, I've never forgotten that. And I thought, you know, we just, we just try to shrink things down to the point where we're comfortable with them. Yeah. And I just think the universe is so much more complex, so much bigger. Yeah. And I just, I think it's wonderful that you're asking these hard questions. I mean, my gosh, this is... They're hard questions. Oh, I forgot a question I wanted to ask you. Um, What church callings have you had over the years? I've wondered that too. Uh, Gospel doctrine teacher Uh uh, I've had. um, When we were in Florida, I was on high council for for, uh, three years. Okay. Um, um, I'm currently the award employment specialist. Oh, so I... Help people get jobs. Yeah, help people get jobs. but I've never, I've never had a, you know, like a big calling, like a bishop or oh, a counselor. Oh, high council is a big calling. Yeah, I think they were desperate in Florida for people. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, uh, but that's, uh, that's the most I've ever, I've ever had. I, and I haven't had a desire to be, you know, to, to be seen as somebody who has a big church calling. Uh-huh. That's just never been important to me. The notoriety around that. The notoriety oh. around it still isn't. And so obviously, what you're telling me about, you, you've never been attracted to children. I, one of my questions was always, um, if you had callings around children. No, yeah. never, I'd never had a calling around children. Um, I was going to ask you one more thing about that. Um, let me think. Yeah, it was just the, the callings, and then... I think that was it. Uh, and said, said that you were doing the temple videos. Did he? Yeah. When I talked to him, he said that you were working on the temple videos. When did you, how long ago did you talk to him? Two days ago. I just wanted to ask him, because I was unclear about how that, how that happened with the state president getting involved. And so I said, like, my parents were never contacted by the church. We never never got to share their side of the story. And then, and then just in, in passing, it said that you were working on the temple videos. Did he respond to your, your point about the church never contacting your parents? Did he talk about He that just kept all? saying, I had full faith in... Um, Harold Brown. Harold Brown. He said, I had full faith in, in Harold Brown, and I turned it over to Harold, reported it, and, um, and, that's, he, and, and that's what he said. And, and he said, I don't know what came of it. He said, I don't know what came of it. He said, I, um, I wasn't involved in the church court. Um, and he's, so he just kind of made it seem like, you know, he, he just got the information from my dad, was told to turn to report it, which, which he did to Harold Brown, and, uh, and then that was pretty much it. Yeah. But then he did say in passing that, or, or that, because uh, I said, I'm, I want to make sure that that there's no other victims and that, that Sterling isn't hurting anybody. And then he said, uh, well, 
I would sure hope not, because he's working right now. He's doing the temple videos for the church. And he said that on two different occasions. And he said that he's. So I don't know if that's like classified information that you're not allowed to tell people, and that he shouldn't be telling people. But that's that's what he told me. Yeah. And I don't know where he would. It's interesting. I saw. Um, oh, it, it was right around the time. He and I remember, I remember us both saying to each other, and I can't remember who said it first, but, you know, he, he said, you know, he said, I hope we're both different men than we were back then. Oh. You know, he said, he talked about regretting divorcing. Did he? He did. I'm surprised said, to hear that. Wow. Yeah, he said he regretted divorcing. He said if he had to do it over again, he wouldn't do that. And he said, and he turned to me and he said, I hope you're a different man than you were. And I said, yeah, I am. I'm a different man than I was. Mm. back then and we had kind of a nice moment there for mm -hmm. for just a, a second or two right so, yeah 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 well that's nice to hear I love it. I'm crazy about it. I'm love crazy about the whole too. family you know I'm crazy about that family and I don't know everything that went down while I was so young you know but it doesn't really matter now yeah but it seems like they no it seems like they have all grown stepped into their new reality based on what I see it just you know it just seems as though those those kids are so great and, you know yeah they're doing good your things. your kids I've talked to your kids and um and like you know Andrew's so sweet and he you know Van Wagon kids have a hard hard time communicating about things <laughs> you know and I don't like, I wouldn't label that's, I wouldn't say that that's exclusive to the Van Wagenen kids. Hardly, it's, hardly. Yeah, I mean, I would say there's a lot of people like that, but he just, he was just kind of saying like, it's, it's hard to talk about things. It's, it's hard to talk about different things. And um, that's. Well, we've sure talked about this situation. Recently. In the last, yeah, in the last week, in the last week or 10 days. We oh. sure. Yeah, I've had uh, I've had long conversations, not with everybody yet, because we're in Europe. But yeah, but I've talked about it at great length, and um, not so much because he's been busy. Good kids, though. I think they are good kids. They are good, good kids. people. I mean, when I say kids, they're they're adults now, but yeah, good, people. good people. Really, I mean, I just think the world of all of them checked in with me today just to see, just say, you know, hey, I hope it goes well. And yeah, I told. Together tonight. Just nice, thoughtful people. You know what I mean? Really thoughtful. Well, I know I know they sure have an investment in your healing and, and this. And... You know how I'm feeling? Um, part of me is feeling like um, that I asked myself, why did this happen to me? Like, I wrote back and was like, what? So he's like, no way. He's like, uh, and then he says, uh, you know, that dad said this only happened to you, Sean. And then he said, why you? Why Sean Escobar? Why the one time? Why Sean Escobar? Mm. And, and then I'm saying to myself, yeah, because I'm a faith-filled person. Um, why? Why me? Why am I that one person? See? And I don't know, like, I'm just struggling with that. Honestly, I'm... I'm I wish I had an answer for that one. I really do, but I, I sure don't know either. Part of me says, um, and this is what part of me has been saying all along, is that there's probably other victims out there, and I need to, to be that strong person that makes it okay to come forward. See? Sure. That's part of me that's saying that. Well, that helps you to make sense of why this happened, yeah. And then the other part of me is saying, maybe, well, I do think the church really, really probably didn't handle it properly, in my opinion. Um, and maybe I'm supposed to be a voice for that change, too. I don't know. I mean, I'm out of the church, but my whole family's still in the church. All my friends are in the church. So these are two of the things that I'm grappling sure. with the most is making sense of, you know, 
of why that happened to me. Sure, understandably. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've got a couple of things I'm still trying to make sense of too that happened in my childhood and don't have any easy answers, so. Yeah. Look, if, if, if I am, I'm happy to talk with you anytime yeah. if there are Thank other you. questions that come up and you, you feel Thank like you. you need to talk again. Yeah, I yeah. appreciate it. I feel like you've been forthright, which I appreciate. It's just the only thing I still am struggling with is I get the affairs, I get the, you know, I get the, what you're telling me, and I get the, the porn, and I get all of that, and I, I, I still struggle with the, me being the one and only kid, ever. And that being the only time you even have feelings or affection or, or a, an attraction towards, you know. Sure, I, I can understand why, yeah. you, why you continue to be concerned about that. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I wish I knew what I could say yeah. that, would, that would give you some comfort in that, on that front. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, well, I appreciate you being honest with me, though. I do, I appreciate you taking the time. Oh, for heaven's sakes. You know, um, I really do. Yeah, and, and uh, again, I appreciate your courage and uh, being willing to sit down and go through all of this and ask the hard questions. Yeah, they are hard. I appreciate yeah. your... Okay, Sterling. I appreciate your doing that. <sighs> I'll let you run. You need to use the restroom or anything? No, I'm good. <laughs> okay. All right, my friend. Well, thanks again. And Sounds like you've got a good wife, too. Oh, yeah. She's been through a lot. And her side of the family, she's sure been through a lot. Yeah. Cool. Tell her goodbye oh, for me. I will, Sterling. Thanks. You guys stay tuned. If you ever feel like you need to talk again or communicate, please feel free to do that. Okay. Thank you.